and they don't even play me through the huge speaker system when I start playing. They just play me through the two like bold backs that I'm supposed to hear myself through, and then they just point them towards the crowd. And I, yeah, it was just like awkwardly quiet and just like a bunch of people just like, you know, mad cooked on like, just like drugs or whatever, like on psychedelics, just standing there just like, yeah. <laughs> and you could, like, <laughs> Welcome to the 191st episode of the Casa Inns Creation. I'm your host, Chris Deering. This is the show and interview bands and public figures for the MathCore, MathCore adjacent community. Uh, if you enjoy this content, please like, subscribe, do all the social things. Every little bit helps. And feel free to join us every Sunday and Wednesday for the live cast where you can interact with the guests in real time or just hang out in the chat. You can also subscribe to this Twitch channel for just five bucks to get access to the interviews before they hit YouTube and other streaming platforms, as well as get some exclusive emotes. Uh, you can also deliver free by attaching Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. It's like taking five bucks from Jeff Bezos' pocket and putting it into mine. Uh, with that out of the way, let me introduce my guest today who dropped their new EP, Death Trippa Season, back in February. Welcome, welcome in, Death Trippa. How's it going? Yo, what's up? Thank you so much for having me again. Oh, Dude, absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, it's a crazy time difference, so I'm glad we were able to make it work. You're like, I think, 19 hours ahead of me, something like that. Crazy. I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, glad we made it here. Um, what's your? Uh, let's start off with an actual introduction. What's your real name? Unless you don't want us to know. Nah, um, so, my name's Ian. Yeah, from New Zealand. Born and raised here. Make angry computer music. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, can you tell us how the project came to be? Uh, what made you want to start it? Things like that. Um, so it was sort of like a, a lockdown kind of thing in the first lockdown. So, um, a bit of I guess a bit of history on like my musical background and stuff. Like I was pretty like into the whole hardcore scene and all ages scene in New Zealand when I was like fifteen, sixteen. Um, played in hardcore bands and played drums in like a sort of I guess like. 2000s like seven angel seven plagues misery signal style band called seven beliefs and then like in lockdown you know i couldn't play music with my friends and play hardcore so i was like oh like you know can i try make hardcore on my computer but just have more like of the aesthetics of you know computer music make it sound like i'm just basically like digital hardcore so it kind of so came did you know about cyber grind before you started that or was no it like kind of... not definitely. really yeah. that's sick. i didn't okay. know yeah it was super random so yeah for me it was like i just wanted to make like i was pretty hard into like um a lot of trap at the time too and then um i posted on mathcore index page when i like dropped i think the first song and on like the nintendo core page as well and then nick the big money cyber grind dude is like this is a cyber grind you need to join the cyber grind group and i was like what the fuck is cyber grind <laughs> but yeah pretty crazy stuff that's uh, holy shit <laughs> so uh you dropped your first ep pain olympics in 2020 um how was the reaction and stuff did it go the way you thought it was gonna go uh yeah, I think like at the time, I mean, I was definitely going through it a bit mentally. And I think I was sort of like, yeah, I just want to put something out, which like encompass encompasses like all my angst and, and shit. And I was like, no one's going to care. No one's going to like listen to it. I'll just like post in a couple of groups and if people like it, that's cool. If not, like it's just a little side project thing while I, you know, play in bands. But yeah, like people like actually cared and like actually really liked it, which was like super surprising to me. And it was like, oh, maybe I should like keep doing this. Like maybe I should turn it into a live thing and, you know, yeah, and it's kind of just sort of grown a bit from there, which is real cool to see. Like, I never thought, like, out of all the sort of musical things I've done in the past, mm -hmm. that this would be the one that people have kind of, like, you know, set their eyes onto, which is, like, really awesome to see. Oh, hell yeah. Um, so, since you did that, you've dropped a bunch of different, like, singles and stuff. You did another EP, uh, The Trip Tape, which I thought was really fucking cool. Um, it's uh, a good like lead into your newest release. Uh, you want to tell us about how things evolved from your first EP to Trip Tape? Yeah, so I guess like I don't know. I felt like the right thing to do was like put out singles. I guess I sort of after I made the first one, I didn't really know where I wanted to go. Like stylistically, I was like maybe should it be like a bit more like new metally. Maybe it should be a bit more like you know trampy. Like I wasn't sure. So I feel like. And also, like, production-wise, I wasn't really sure what I was doing. Like, the first EP is just, like, distorted to, like, all shit. Like, just me cranking the distortion and everything, which is cool. And, like, 
it sounds really cool looking back on it now, but I feel like I was like, with a lot of the singles, it's sort of in between like me being able to like produce cleanly and still me not really know what's happening. So I feel like between like all those, like the EP and like trip tape, it was just sort of find my footing a bit. And then I started working on the EP and I was like, fuck, this is taking like way longer than I thought it, it would. So I just put out like the trip tape, which sort of like encompasses like that last kind of like 2021 um, just that year of stuff and stuff I've been up to to sort of like have like another thing to put out before I put out Death Tripper season. So when uh, when did you find like the cyber grind genre and stuff and start digging into it? Was it before Trip Tape or was it afterwards? Because I feel like this is where uh, things pivot and you start finding your sound. Although you hadn't quite found it on Trip Tape, this is like I feel like where it's like leading into what you're currently doing yeah thank you um i think like i found the cyber grind community probs like just after like pain olympics okay. and then you know start finding out about like zombie shark and like blind equation and, and thought crime and then like you know doing a track for, like boy dweller and stuff and it was cool and also like um yeah i think a big thing which helped out a lot was during the writing of like death trip of a season like james mchenry and i have just been like talking lots and just like you know just shooting ideas off each other and just like you know, he's kind of almost sort of like mentored me with like just the whole creative process of like making that kind of music, which was like super helpful and like super inspiring, especially like, you know, for someone like him who's been like doing the whole cyber grind Nintendo core thing for like a decade now since like 2013, you know. So oh, yeah. James is an awesome guy, like really good at uh, uh at helping people along and stuff. Uh, it's awesome. Dude. Um. But yeah, I think it's really interesting how you started doing this without knowing a thing about cyber grind. It, it's just such an interesting uh, uh, turn of events here. So, <laughs> um, but anyway, you come into death death trip death tripper season. Sorry, I, I keep wanting to say death ripper for some reason with your name, but the T's in there. Anyway, uh, I actually didn't realize that it was supposed to be season until I saw on your Instagram how it said death tripper death tripper season and uh, put together the S Z N is supposed to be season. So it, it, anyway, I think I, was, I thought it was funny, but um, it's so much different from where you started from. Uh, it's even a lot different from trip tape. Can you explain like uh, your evolution up to this point? Like what made you, cause you push a lot of boundaries. You have a lot of different things going on in here. Where does it all come from? I think like compared to pain Olympics, um, pain Olympics for me, I guess like the mission statement was like, I want to make like an album or like an EP that people can sort of like mosh their face off to and, but have it with like no guitars or like no real drums, you know, like, and I feel like with, with Death Trip of a Season, it's it's more so just like encompasses all of like my favorite music and all the stuff I'm listening to like right now, just like thrown into like one pot. So it's like, you know, having like Memphis hip hop influences in there and like having like, you know, UK like deep dubstep thrown in there and acid techno and like prodigy style stuff mixed with like hardcore and like, you know, um, Tony Danza riffs. It's I feel like I just wanted to make something which is grabbing everything that I listen to and just like, but in like nine minutes. Oh yeah, that's what's up. Uh, I, I honestly, I think this is probably one of the best Cyber Grind releases I've heard so far. Uh, oh, thank you I so much. Like it's so kind of you. It's super like aggressive, I guess is the best way I could describe it. It's a word I kept coming back to when I was like, I don't mean aggressive as in it's just like noise or whatever. Uh, what I mean is like, it's so like, tied to the beat i guess is a good way to putting it i don't know it, it's hard to describe because it's not like most cyber grind bands are either super noisy and you have no idea what the hell's happening and either that's like because of the way that they wrote it or because of the production value or whatever or it's like more like nintendo core or happy and stuff. and a lot of projects have a problem like kind of together you know except for a few notable people but uh i feel like that's a hard thing to do and i feel like you've done it really well and you've added in a lot of other things too like there's almost like dubstep portions and shit and uh i don't know uh i had a lot of notes hold on i lost myself <laughs> um here we go but yeah you you uh can like rein back in like the the brutalness and like uh your break your crazy breakdowns that end up happening or the dubstep parts and stuff like that and come back with something super listenable while it's also very beat driven i guess is a good way to put it uh and it's got a lot of great hooks and melodies like on uh easy mode that's one of my favorite that's probably my favorite song actually uh 
uh, it's a really good example of like bringing a melody into like uh, again an aggressive like style or whatever. Um, really diverse. Hey, you have a lot of different sounds too. And like one of the things that uh, uh, that sound it's weird to like praise, but I think it's really interesting. It's how you use like robotic voices and shit. And like I know that's like really stupid, and someone like looking into this without even uh, being in context would be like, oh, why, why does that matter? Or whatever. It a lot of bands they if they try to incorporate this type of thing, they it's really ham fisted, I guess. But these the way you like edit the voices and you make them like all glitchy sounding and stuff, it fits in really well. I I, I don't know how to how to describe it. Um, I'm still kind of new to like you know electronic music terms and stuff, so I feel like there's a lot better way to describe why this album's oh this ep's good but i think it's fucking sick and i found a lot of moments where i was like god damn that was a sick that was a sick moment right there or whatever and uh it's hard for me to do that with a lot of like cyber grind stuff that happens so yeah this is like one of the best like releases i've heard so far from it damn thank you so much like that means like way too much like thank you so much for all those kind words i really really appreciate it absolutely it, it seems like it should have taken you a long time to put this together too how, how long would you say you were uh, working on this uh, like definitely over a year, which is ridiculous because it's like nine minutes of music. So it was like, I remember I made, uh, there's definitely like, there's more tracks which were meant to be on it, but I just didn't put them on there. Like, I feel like with this release, as opposed to like when I was like putting out a lot of singles in like 2021, back then I was like, oh yeah, make a track, throw it out, throw it out, throw it out, um, like into the, into the world or whatever. When with this one, it was like, this needs to be like the best nine minutes I can make. And yeah, there are a lot of tracks which like didn't make it. And then um, a lot of tracks which were just like reworked because I made it to the, like the mixing stage and I was like, okay, these drums like don't really fit properly or there's way too much going on. I need to strip this back. And especially like when I'm mixing a lot of like um, the shit, like the, you know, the hip hop parts or like the techno parts of like the metal parts, like all those bass frequencies and like where the kick drum sits uh it's like so different like when you're having like huge sub bass parts compared to like you know doing some crazy frantic like dillinger escape plan part where the bass is more sort of like and the i guess speaking real technical here like you know around like the weird like 100 to like 200 or whatever as opposed to it sitting like you know a hundred um you know under a hundred it's like making all the, those like different registers sit together and like one minute of music was like so fucking difficult. So I feel like mixing it took like a couple of months for sure. And then by the time that like I finished it, I was like, oh, I just want to like, you know, throw it out into the open. And I was like, man, I should be like a little bit smarter about like putting it out as well. So like, yeah, probably like, yeah, over a year, definitely like the longest time I've spent on like a, one release before. Well, that's sick. Uh, it, it shows. It shows. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know what else to say. It's amazing uh, the way you've crafted it. Hell yeah. Hats off to you. <laughs> um, so uh, lyrics seem to be about like personal health, things like that. Uh, about right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I feel like definitely with Pain Olympics, it was like, I don't know. I felt like I was being like super fucking on the nose about it. And like, now I look back on it and I kind of cringe a little bit. I'm like, man, like, you know, I was definitely going through it, but I'm like, man, I'm so emo. But <laughs> um, with the, with the new one, it's like, I don't know. Like I've definitely had like a lot of like difficult things to get over within the, like the past two years and a lot of stuff, which is like hit really hard. And I always try to write my lyrics to be, you know, if something bad happens to me, whether it, you know anything else happens to be involved and in, it's always like for me about the reflection of like how i deal with it and like you know how like i respond to a situation or something so like i try to keep it like pretty pretty introspective but it's sort of like i didn't realize until i like finished it but i kind of go through like cycles of like trauma response between each song like it's kind of like first songs like shock dealing with something fucked up and then the next song and the song after that are like sort of bitter, like resentment, kind of anger. And then the last two songs, it's like, well, you know, shit went down and like, you're going to have to like, just learn to like deal with it, you know, as life goes on. And it's like, it's like easy mode. It's sort of like, I don't know. One of my friends said this to me like a couple years ago when something like pretty bad happened to me. And he was like, 
you know, mental health, like it's never going to get easier, but like learning to deal with it well. And I think that just kind of stuck with me real hard. And it's like, that's so true. It's like, you're always going to like get better at like coping with like things and learn better mechanisms and better things, which like help your brain out. But like at the end of the day, like whatever is like making you struggle, like that's probably going to be there, especially if it's like a mental health issue. So it's, it's sort of like, I don't know, pessimistic, but like realistic at the same time. But yeah definitely not super optimistic that's for sure but hey. yeah uh you know they came uh, th- they came across a lot a little bit better than your uh your... not not so but uh um do you produce mix and master this uh you did a really good job uh better than the last one i will say uh the last one compared to this one is a little like impressed i would say but uh this one everything seems like it's in a great place uh you can hear everything really well uh yeah this is like night and day i, I would say so good shit yeah thank you how long do you think it took you to uh mix and master um i kind of cheated with the mastering just used like ozone and, and oh, just okay. like yeah, use I mean. the use the track the um just the track analyzer and then just like messed around with the maximizer um yeah i was pretty cheeky with the mastering but yeah mixing a couple of months definitely because like yeah i had to like um rework the tracks pretty hard um and change a lot of the drum parts like with um the song crowd killer like i ended up just rewriting like the entire intro and like yeah basically almost like rewrote the entire song so it would just like work well like mix wise like a bit better so yeah definitely like probs like two or three months of me like slamming my head against the wall trying to make things sound nice and i think like yeah, if I ever did an album, like I'm just gonna go crazy. I think, like, just trying to mix all of it, like, it'll just take <laughs> way too long. Oh, that's sick though. Yeah, it came out really well, like I was saying. Uh, I and I totally feel what you're saying about like uh, slamming your head up against the wall. I, I I do that type of shit too. Um, but uh, yeah, eventually you start figuring out what works, and I feel like you've gotten to a place where you know what works. So, I feel like next time around shouldn't be nearly as bad for you. Um and it's up on screen now uh you did art with uh lydia hill um yeah. you want to so, tell us what we're oh, i leave the album up on screen you want to tell us what we're looking at? So, yeah so basically um so lydia is my partner um and they're like a really really talented artist and um we did that i think we both had covid at the time and we're sort of like thinking we're just like bored as fuck we we're watching lots of like justin bieber documentaries as well okay at the same time for whatever for whatever <laughs> fucking reason i don't know i have this really weird thing where like i hyper fixate on like artists that i just don't like really care about and i just have to learn everything about them and at that time it was like justin bieber completely unrelated but like um so yeah we we're just like drawing stuff and i really wanted to do something like real like 90s rave aesthetic like it's like the art's a super big ripoff of like um a lot of the thunderdome compilations which is like european like gather like sort of just like hard hard techno vibes and um so i drew the original sketch so that um and then lydia just like made it like more symmetrical and just better and then just like basically like painted it like digital art um it's cool because it's like quite different to a lot of like lydia's other work like they do a lot more sort of like dark art like real like stuff which would look like great on like you know death metal album covers and they've done like a couple of like commissions for like grindcore bands like local grindcore bands and stuff like that so it's kind of cool to see like something like full color and stuff from from them and it was just like yeah a nice thing to to work on together and it's just like cool collaborating nice uh when are we gonna see the uh alien thing on a shirt yeah that would be awesome i'd definitely be keen to keen to do some stuff like that once i have like more money and like can print more merch for sure i'd be super keen to chuck that up and also like um i know a couple of my friends have been asking about like the easy mode single cover about having that on a shirt as well which would be dope as well because yeah my friend geordie did that one and i think it turned out like really awesome as well so both of them on shirts would be super sick uh but yeah um what like how did why did you come up with like an alien uh is it just the uh aesthetic from the the i guess the gabber community is what you were saying again i don't know much about like electronic music yeah. so but uh <laughs> so yeah it's definitely like um 
with with like a lot of those Thunderdome album art, it's it's like some kind of like monster or like some like skeleton, like Grim Reaper thing or like a clown or like a something like that. I think yeah, I was just like drawing something. Yeah, just just like was want to do some like alien zombie kind of thing and like you know make it like kind of psychedelic looking. It's cool because if you turn it upside down as well, it's like another face too because it's like two mouths, which is pretty oh, awesome. Shit, so for like so the good. um. For the cassettes we did um, here, the limbless cassettes, uh, if you turn the like J card inside out, it's like the upside down print of the of the head. So it's like both of them, which is cool. But yeah, I just wanted to do something like weird, creepy, psychedelic y kind of vibes. Sort of like hand in hand with the sort of like um yeah, the monster aesthetic of like the Thunderdome art. Because the Thunderdome art is basically like, you know, lighting uh, lightning in the background and like the same logo up the top. And then just like some scary looking thing. So, okay. yeah. I'm looking up Thunderdome art real quick. Just to see what it looks like. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. That does look exactly like it too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's sick. Um, but yeah, uh, it looks really interesting. It's a lot different from other like cyber grind releases and stuff too. So it definitely sticks out. Uh, now that I know like the context of it, uh, it's, it's definitely, uh, uh, definitely interesting. Um, so you did a bunch of music videos and or uh, a bunch of music visualizers and such, but uh, we're gonna show your live, your full live set because I think it's super interesting how you do shit live. Um, how do you do things live? I guess we can start off with that. Um, yes. Yeah, so basically, it's taken a little while to figure out, and I realize I can do it a little bit smarter, like now. But basically, I have my laptop and i press play and it's basically like all my stems except for drums and there's some like electronic drums in there like breaks and stuff and then that gets sent with a click to otis who plays drums live and then also the backing track just gets like sent to front of house and then i just do like vocals on top of that um so the only issue with that is like yeah it's one whole track so it'd be i, th I reckon it'll be a lot smarter to have them all like um you know hooked up to like a midi pad so i can just cue every song with a click that way in case like something fucks out and then i don't have to like go to my laptop and like scroll back or something like that but um yeah we do that and then sometimes i'll play as well with the dj like in this set um i play with um my friend shay who does like backing vocals and he's like just like cueing like air horns and like trap sounds and stuff as well um with a with a midi pad the first show we did we did it with um with with like actual decks but it just seemed like more of an more complicated than like it needed to be so it's just like trying to make it as simple as possible i think is definitely like the main goal and it's still like an ongoing process with like making it work live and just trying to minimize technical difficulties but yeah no it's fucking awesome uh it's cool that you have like an actual drummer or whatever uh most people just uh do a backing track and sing over that so not that that's like you know bad or whatever but it, it's a different experience having an actual drummer um and this is otis from uh infinite hex too right yeah definitely yeah so like um i've played with three different drummers um which is like it's really cool like playing with lots of different drummers because i'm a drummer as well so it's like just having like everyone like interprets how to play the tracks like slightly differently which is like really cool so everyone kind of has their own spin on on the tracks and um so i played like auckland which is like uh probably like a 12 hour bus ride or like an eight hour drive from where i am and i played with a drummer uh, like a death metal drummer up in auckland for the show i did there which was cool like playing with a different drummer and then like yeah otis is crazy though like he's like yeah definitely like one of the best drummers like i've ever played with hands down as far as like learning stuff and just like being quick and just tight at playing with a click and like because he also makes like pretty similar music like he really gets the vibe of it too but yeah it, it's like insane like i remember because i'm playing a show tomorrow um at, here in wellington my hometown and like we didn't really practice until like monday and we're playing like new songs and i was like holy nice. shit like you know how's this gonna go like stressing out it's funny because i thought i just like moved out of town and he was like coming back down um to fucking play the show but he didn't tell me he actually like still lives pretty close i'm like man this is why like i haven't been like hitting you up to practice with me because i thought you like moved like 12 hours away and he's like oh nah 
I didn't end up doing that. I was like, fuck. You could have said, but that's all good. But yeah, so um, we practiced on Monday and he just like nailed it. Like, you know, been practicing at home and it was just like, fuck, I feel so much better now about the show tomorrow because of it. But yeah, he's just like the craziest drummer. Like, it's insane that he's like willing to like even like play my dumb music with me. So it's sick. It's so dope. No, it's tight. And uh, judging by the video or whatever, you have a pretty big crowd that, uh, that follows you all around, man yeah it's it's cool like the new zealand scene is like pretty pretty small and stuff but the venue that like there like i work at that venue as well so it's like that definitely helps when it's like i'm there every single day like going to all different kinds of shows like you know at that venue it's like we'll have like raves we'll have death metal shows punk shows like you know hardcore shows like indie shows like sometimes we'll have like poetry and like that kind of shit there so it's um it's definitely like you you know meet people talk pe to people and people will just more so like show up just because it's like oh that's ian you know he works here so they'll like pull up and like enjoy it and stuff but yeah it's cool like the scene in wellington uh is is pretty awesome because it is quite because like the population of new zealand is quite small you have a lot of people going out to like different shows like different style shows it's not like you'll have like a dedicated you know metal crowd who only go to metal shows or a dedicated like punk crowd to only go to punk shows because it's just like not enough punk shows happening mm. so you'll always get like um hardcore kids like showing up to like raves and showing up to like um you know dubstep kind of vibe stuff or you'll have like hip-hop kids who will go to like the indie shows and it's just cool that there's like that much of a of a crossover between scenes so whenever I like try running shows um, in Wellington, I'll always do like crossover shows where I'll have like maybe like a hip hop artist and then like have a DJ on and then a death metal band and then like me or something like that. And just kind of like have a show which just has like all different sort of vibes of like all the different little scenes which are happening in Wellington. Oh, hell yeah. Are there other Cybergarden artists besides you and uh, uh, Otis? Ah. Uh... It's a good question. There's a couple of like um sort of like digital hardcore sort of things. I know um Olga who's been pretty involved in doing art for like um I think she did some merch for like Zombie Shark. Um she used to play in this band called Marrow Spawn, which was kind of like I guess more like traditional style cyber grind in the sense that it was like grindcore but like drum machine. Sort of like oh, okay. noise grind, but with like um but the drum machine would be like the guitarist Casper, like he would like plug his iPhone into the aux cord and just like play all the drums out of there, and then they would just like play kind of like nails style, full of health style stuff, which was like real cool. And Olga also, she does um this like kind of the last album's been like ambient, but when she's played live, it's been like harsh noise, and we'll do like like harsh noise style stuff. But yeah, apart from apart from that, there's this like kid who's like just turned 18 called like Xavier spelled like XRVR which is sort of like synth punk kind of stuff like just like backing track like yeah synth punk style stuff which is pretty cool as well and um, we played like a show together but apart from that like it's really just like me and Otis but Otis doesn't play like inf infinite heck shows like right. live so like I guess like I'm like the only like active like live style grand artist unless like there's someone i don't know about but yeah i think for the most part i'm like the main one hell yeah uh any plans to take it outside of new zealand yeah definitely definitely like i want to um see if i can do hopefully to like america that'd be like awesome well like, do you have there. plans to like do stuff yeah definitely yeah i think i'm gonna head to america this year hopefully but like well um, no not yeah, like, like uh, uh aspirations i mean do you have like things like in the works or whatever to like yeah. travel outside of new zealand like go to australia or something like that yeah no i do have like plans to go to america like I'm. I'm oh like it's actually or happening or whatever okay yeah yeah, yeah oh yeah, shit yeah. what the fuck okay i i thought that maybe we were like uh uh getting wires mixed okay that's crazy dude uh when, when do you think you're coming uh, in July. Really? What the fuck? Okay. That's crazy. It's super yeah. close. <laughs> yeah. When, uh, what are you, nah, you going to be doing? Um, 
like i think we're doing like it's still kind of like i don't know how much i should be talking about this actually just because like okay. none of it's like really announced or whatever but i'll yeah, i guess i'll i'll leave i'll leave it there i'll leave it there i'll say like yeah i'm definitely like gonna hit america this year so that'll be good fun okay yeah. okay that's crazy all righty <laughs> yeah um well hey if you're coming to texas or something like that or we cross paths like we definitely gotta get something yeah for sure for sure okay so we talked about shows what's the best show that you've played um honestly i'd say it was like the the second death tripper show i I opened up for machine girl up in auckland which was crazy like machine girl i'm not sure if you're aware i've heard of the machine name girl. a bunch so i feel like it's a big deal but I, i've never like actually listened yeah, it's like pretty big like digital hardcore uh group from america from new york i'm pretty sure and yeah it was sick because it was like it was pretty last minute like i'm lucky i managed to get like cheap flights to go and and play it but yeah it was like packed out room of like 400 kids like and yeah first show i've ever played with is like an actual barrier between like the crowd and the stage which was pretty bad but like yeah it was it was awesome just because like the vibe was like you know the the crowd were just like hyped just like so hyped just to see anything and like any any music um so yeah that was that was super sick and just like um everyone loved it and there were so many people who came up to me afterwards being like yo like i had no idea who you were until i saw this and like even when i played my last auckland show they were like kids who showed up and were like oh like you know i saw you at the machine girl show and like i've come and like um you know come because of that and i've been like a fan since so that was like pretty definitely a pretty awesome show for sure and just like yeah everyone was like real into it and machine girl were like real nice and they like came out and they like actually watched my set from the side of the stage as well so that was like awesome oh yeah that's awesome uh what's the best or worst shows you played um so there's this one festival i played i'm not gonna say the name of the festival but um well you've only done like what four shows so i'm sure it's pretty obvious yeah but this could (laughs) this could hyper this could hypothetically be in a in a different band oh gotcha gotcha okay okay yeah and um yeah i rocked up and i was meant to be playing like at like 3 a.m and um, what (laughs) yeah well because it was like yeah just like big ass festival and yeah they just like didn't read that i think they just thought i was like a gonna be a dj so they didn't like check my tech writer or anything and then like yeah i rocked up and like oh you needed a microphone to do your set and i was like yeah like i do and like i don't know if you can play because we don't know if we can get the microphone working through the pa so i was like oh okay we sound check it and it like turns out okay and i'm like sweet this is probably gonna work so then i rock up to do the set at like 3 a.m or whatever and this is after like traveling for ages as well i'm like tired as fuck or whatever and it's like yeah festival so like set up my camping and shit and like yeah i rock up and um they can't find like the um the rca adapters to like plug my laptop in to play the set What? The and fuck? then um so they're freaking out and then i managed to suss some myself and then they managed to suss some just after like i found them and then yeah i rock up and they don't even play me through the huge speaker system when i start playing they just play me through the two like bold backs that i'm supposed to hear myself through and then they just point them towards the crowd and I, yeah, it was just like awkwardly quiet and just like a bunch of people just like, you know, mad cooked on like, just like drugs or whatever, like on psychedelics, just standing there just like, yeah. And you could like, and like all my interludes and stuff as well. Like you could hear like the other stages, like of the festival, like real loudly, like while I was playing. So it's just like really awkward. And I was like, man, I got to sell this, like, you know, fucking like doing vocals or whatever, and like screaming all the shit just like having like the worst time and then i just remember like right after that just like unplugging like going to bed i'm like man i mean at least i get to go to a sick festival but like yeah just bad organization i guess no i've definitely I, I had experiences like that before too Dude, that fucking sucks what the hell they didn't play through the speaker system <laughs> that's so fucking weird and that's, yeah <laughs> and, and, yeah it was just like i don't understand why because they did it at sound check as well so i was like oh and it sounded pretty sick at sound check too like but 
yeah yeah just definitely like i don't i don't know like maybe it was just like real bad like miscommunication or whatever well it's, but um they also put you on at 3 a.m so i'm sure people weren't like super like yeah uh, it, you know excited to like help you out or whatever so that fucking sucks. yeah definitely definitely yeah this this festival is like they it's like 24 hour music for like four days straight Jesus which is pretty fucking Christ. sick i mean that's yeah, tight but like what the fuck that's crazy <laughs> yeah just like ravers you know it's like but so, yeah that was uh, definitely <laughs> so there's no merch now you're talking about merch coming uh any idea like what what's gonna be coming yeah so i'm gonna take mer- like photos for a merch um like tonight so i have like ho- hoodie uh bleh, i have hoodies printed um which i'm gonna sell at the show tomorrow and then yeah i want to do like um yeah just like more t-shirts more long sleeves that kind of stuff i've got cassettes as well um but yeah it's cool like i usually design most of my own merch as well which is like lots of fun um but like recently with um lydia who's helped down the art like we've both been like collaborating and, and doing like merch together which has also been real cool but yeah it'd be cool to do like windbreakers as well i reckon windbreakers would be real sick but, oh yeah yeah nice so do you do you have merch available somewhere already or um like yeah i think i'm gonna sell these hoodies at the show tomorrow and then maybe put some up online i guess like gotcha. um i've got some merch through like um big money cyber grinds like teespring that you can get okay. just like hoodies and like long sleeves and stuff like that of like the pain olympics print but i guess the big thing about like shipping to america and stuff from new zealand is it's so expensive right to like ship it over and that's why i did like with the um with the release of cassettes i did like a new zealand distro so all the um like people who like my music in new zealand can buy it and then um all the people in america can get like the the big money cybergrind ones so it means that people don't have to pay like 50 dollars to get like a you know 15 dollar cassette or whatever right well, that's sick okay so no merch now but there will be in the future yeah sounds good um yeah i guess uh we'll wrap this up with your album of the year from last year sweet um so all i could think of is like not an album but an ep by this band um called speed who are like a sydney hardcore band um they've really been like making sort of the rounds as well like touring all over the world at the moment with um just like they did like sound of fury fest in australia and i think they're hitting the uk as well this year for outbreak fest and I think they're in Singapore right now too, which is real cool. But yeah, just like, to be honest, like pretty straight up hardcore stuff, like real sort of like, um, definitely like remind me of like Irate and like Marauder and that kind of stuff. But they do it in like a real kind of like fresh way and they're all like stylish as hell. All their music videos, it's like, they just all look fresh as fuck and like rep the Australian hardcore thing real cool. Um, but yeah, I'd say definitely that Gang Called Speed EP called A Gang Called Speed um is just like really really good solid hardcore like worth checking out oh well, hell yeah that's awesome um anything else you want to say before we head on out um just like i don't know shout outs to big money Cybergrind. um shout outs to like james McHenry as well um shout outs just like i don't know everyone who's just supported me up until this point like I wanted to be on this podcast since I like found out about it because it's <laughs> fucking cool and you have so many dope artists on. So it's like pretty surreal for me to be like sitting here talking to you right now. So just like everyone who's like fucking, I don't know, come to one of my shows, listen to any music I've made, like bought anything, like you know, that's like surreal and so sick, and I couldn't be any more thankful for that. So yeah, well, hell yeah. Uh, so if you dig Cyber Grind, you got to check out the Death Trippa season, the new EP from Death Trippa, which dropped back in February. Uh, you're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Bandcamp, all the cool places. Are there any uh, links that I'm missing? Uh, Twitter? Do you say Twitter? I did not. That's right. You are uh, on Twitter. Sweet. Okay. I guess that's it. Oh, uh, shout outs um, fucking Vigalvin as well. That fucking EP. Oh, that album that they chucked out this year was so dope yeah 
Um, as for me, drop my channel, follow so you always know when I go live. You can also sub to get access to the interviews before they hit YouTube and streaming platforms, as well as get some exclusive emotes. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. YouTube folks, if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like to the notification bell. Don't forget to subscribe. It's a great way to support me for free. Check out my music, The Sound That Ends Creation, at the Sound That Ends Creation at Bandcamp.com. Uh, I just announced a tour for the northeast. Or yeah, northeast. Uh, gonna be about forty-five days. Check out dates on my uh, Instagram and socials. Uh, my next guest is. Uh, I forgot to write that down. So that is awesome. One second. My next guest is Suplex, uh, mathcore band from uh, Santa Rosa area. Actually, just dropped their debut EP. Uh, I think it was two weeks ago now. Uh, so yeah, gonna have them on uh, on this Sunday, the twelfth. Uh, uh, join us at 7 p.m. Central for the live cast. Uh, thanks for being here, Ian. Hope you had a good time. Yeah, thank you so much again for having me. It's so dope. Absolutely, and thank you guys for watching and listening.